Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Matt Hirabayashi. I'm a PGY3 at Mizzou applying for refractive surgery fellowships this summer. I'm very passionate about IOLs and lens technology. And actually, thanks to Dr. Shabani, I've been really interested in spherical aberration. So uh, for those that don't know, spherical aberration describes the phenomenon where um, peripheral rays enter a spherical lens at a greater angle of incidence than the central rays. So they experience a greater uh, refractive effect. And uh, the consequence is that their um, focal point falls anterior to the principal focal plane of the central rays. So the human cornea is subject to this effect. And it, even though it compensates by having what's called a prolate shape, so the central cornea is a few diopters steeper than the peripheral cornea. The most commonly cited value for spherical aberration of the human cornea is plus 0.27 microns. So that means that the peripheral rays are focusing 0.27 microns anterior to those central rays. This is something that also surgeons have control over and not just in the case of laser refractive surgery. Most IOLs on the market today have varying degrees of spherical aberration correction ranging from minus 0.27, so the theoretical full effect correction to the aberration neutral lenses to positively aspheric IOLs, which are kind of new to the market. And um, there's been a lot of evidence that maybe spherical aberration is something that we don't even need to correct or should worry about correcting because there's some literature that suggests it provides a depth of focus benefit and it provides superior distance corrected near vision in the spherical aberration neutral platforms. So this is also something that can be fairly easily measured in clinic. The, um, the Pentacam is a Scheinflug tomographer, and it can measure higher order aberrations. So we, I started paying attention to it in, um, for the cataract surgery pre-ops. It's part of the holiday report. And I was just kind of like subjectively noticing the values seemed higher. They kind of seemed all over the place. And most of the studies on spherical aberration actually are fairly small, and they have large confidence intervals. So with the help of Aris Garabegi, we went through over 1,700 pentacams. So he really earned his spot at our program next year. Went through over 1,700 pentacams, the associated biometry, and the pa patient baseline demographic information to determine the human corneal spherical aberration of the cataractus population and how it relates to these pre-op measurements. We also, just for you know, interest, compared our data set against the current market for FDA-approved IOLs. So what we found was that, for one, spherical aberration is not a normally distributed value in the population, so there really is no average and there's no standard deviation, and it's you know, not even like, appropriate to statistically think about spherical aberration that way. We also found that the values were higher than previously reported at 0.37 microns um, with a very tight confidence interval, the tightest of any study, at 0.36 to 0.38. We also found that it was positively correlated with age and negatively correlated with keratometry. Lastly, when we plotted our values against the current market of IOL correction, we found that theoretically, if you implanted every single eye with that full minus 0.27 microns of correction, you would actually be bringing up to 6% of eyes further from zero, so to speak, so like worsening their overall aberration profile, which opposes the purpose of the lens. So my philosophy, and I'm sure most people's philosophy with surgery, is that it should be very intentional. Movements inside the eye are intentional, and pre-op planning is intentional. So even though there's no one-size-fits-all lens, this could be another factor that uh, surgeons can use to tailor to individual uh, patients based on uh, goals and needs. Also, with the absence of an aberometer or a shine flute based tomographer, just um, knowing that uh, older age and flatter keratometry tends to be associated with a more significant spherical aberration profile, I think is valuable information. And the next steps, obviously, we are correcting, uh, or we are currently collecting data on distance, intermediate, near, uh, and contrast vision, and getting some subjective data on all our cataract post ops. And we'll correlate that with the um, spherical aberration of the cornea and then the IOL model, and just kind of reinforce some of the older studies, hopefully. And um, that data collection is ongoing, but you can read about this study in the Journal of Refractive Surgery. Fantastic work. Great job, Matt. Thank you.